Hi students, in the previous video we were discussing about the communication interface of embedded systems. So it had two categories. So in that uh, onboard communication interface and external communication interface. We already discussed about the onboard communication interfaces. So today in this video we will be discussing about the external communication interfaces. So in that first example, RS-232C and RS-485. So RS-232 is a long established standard. Here, C represents the current version that describes a physical interface and protocol for relatively low speed serial data communication networks between the computer and the related devices. So it was developed by the Electronics Industry Association, EIA, in the year 1960s. The UART which we already discussed, it worked on the standard of TTL or the CMOS logic. That is, the logic high corresponds to the bit value 1 and the logic low corresponds to the bit value 0 for the bit transmission. Whereas, the RS-232 follows the EIA standard for the bit transmission. That is, uh, as per the EIA standard, that is logic 0 is represented with the voltage between plus 3 and plus 25 and logic 1 represented with the voltage between minus 3 and minus 25 volts and the logic 0 here is called as space and logic 1 is called as mark. The RS-232 supports two types of connectors DB9 and DB25. The DB9 consists of 9 pin and DB25 consists of 25 pin as shown in the diagram and also the pin details of the DB9 and DB25 is shown in the table given. So we'll see the functions of each pin in the later slides. So the next uh, concept is the RS-232 is a point-to-point -point communication interface where and the devices involved in this are called the data terminal equipment DTE and data communication equipment DCE. So these two are very important and uh, there are different pins for the DB9 and DB25 they are described here. Uh, TXD, RXD and ground. So if there is no data flow control is required. So these pins are required for the data transmission and reception. So the RXD pin of DCE should be connected to the TXT pin of DTE and it is vice versa if you want for the proper transmission to happen. The next two pins are RTS and CTS that is request to send and clear to send signals. They are responsible to coordinate the communication between the DTE and DCE. The next pin DTR data terminal ready signal is activated by DTE when it is ready to accept the data. Next is a DSR. Data set ready is activated by DCE when it is ready for establishing a communication link. DCD, data carrier detect, is a control signal which is used by the DCE to indicate the DTE that a good signal is being received. The last pin is a ring indicator, RI, is a modern specific signal line for indicating an incoming call or a telephone on a telephone line. So this RS-232C supports uh, the baud rate of 20 kbps and the commonly used uh, baud rates uh, by the devices are the 300 bps, 1200 bps, 2400 and etc. The commonly and the, uh, that is uh, the popular baud rate is 9600 for setting up for the PC communication. The maximum operating distance supported by this uh, interface is 50 feet. The only limitation is that it only supports the point-to-point -point communication but not for the multi-drop uh, communication. The next version of uh, RS-232 is uh, RS-422. It's a serial interface standard. It is also from EIA for the differential data communication but it supports the multi-drop communication. And uh, next coming to the enhanced version of RS-422 that is RS-485. So it supports the 
multi drop communication as well with 32 transmitting uh, devices and 32 receiving devices whereas uh, 422 only uh, supported for up to 10 so this is about the rs 232c and rs 485 the next example is a universal serial bus the universal serial bus is a wired high speed serial bus for data communication so usb is the most popular connection used to connect a computer to devices such as digital cameras printers scanners and external hard drives so the first version of usb is a 1.0 which was released in the year 1995 so it follows the star topology with a usb host at the center and one or more usb peripheral devices or the host connected to it as shown in the diagram so it supports a connection up to 127 including the slave peripheral devices and other usb hosts the usb transmits data in the packet format each data packet has a standard format so usb uh, supports the distance up to 5 meters and it consists of two types of connectors type a and type b which is shown in the diagram so type a is used for upstream connection and type b is used for downstream connection example example for type a is that usb connector which is present in the desktop pcs or the laptops and the, both the type a and type b connectors contain the four pins so these four pins are shown in the table so what are the functions of these four pins is shown in the following table here so the next the usb supports four different types of data transfer control transfer bulk transfer isochronous data transfer interrupt transfer so each corresponds to different functions so control transfer is used by the usb system software to query configure and issue commands to the usb device bulk transfer is used for sending the block of data to the device for example transferring the data to the printer isochronous data transfer used for real-time data communication whereas interrupt transfer used for transferring small amount of data for the portable media players uh, there is also a mini and micro usb connectors which are available and the standard body that is usb.org uh, which defines and controls the standard for the USB communication. So there is one more connector called Type-C connector which replaces the Type-A and type B because of its small size and the compact uh, features. And uh, this USB supports different data rates as shown here. Uh, that is from the low speed to the super speed plus. Next example is IEEE 1394 which is also called as Firewire. So IEEE 1394 is an interface standard for a serial bus for high speed communication and isochronous real time data transfer. So it was developed in the year um, 1980s. Uh, it was called Firewire from the Apple. So and also it has been named iLink from the Sony Corporation. Lynx is an implementation from the Texas Instruments and it supports a peer-to-peer -peer connection and point-to-multipoint communication. Uh, it supports up to 63 devices to be connected on a bus which uses a tree topology. It supports a data rate of uh, 400 to 3200 megabits per second. There are three types of connectors. Uh, they are the 4-pin connector, 6-pin connector, 9-pin connector. The 6 and 9-pin connectors carry the power also to support the external devices. So these types of connectors are shown in the diagram here. And uh, the pin details for 6, 4 and 9-pin connectors are shown in the table. And also its description is given. So it consists of a TPA, TPB plus, TPB minus. So power, a signal ground as well. So there are two different, uh, that is two differential data transfer lines, A and B per connector. Normally the differential lines of A are connected to B. Uh, if I, if you want to say that is how it is connected, that is TPA plus to TPB plus and 
TPA minus to TPB minus and vice versa. So uh, 1394 is a popular uh, communication interface for connecting embedded devices like digital camera scanners to desktop computers for data transfer and storage. So unlike USB interface, uh, the IEEE 1394 doesn't require a host for communicating between devices. So that means it can directly connect a scanner with a, pin, uh, with a printer for printing. The data rate uh, also it is much higher than that of the USB 2.0 interface. So this is one of the advantage over USB 2.0 of the IEEE 1394.